Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Previously, on building my flux axial generator part 1, I have left nearly when it's time to speak about the coils and how to mount them on the 3D model. Now, on this support, like I said in the previous part, it was designed to be somewhat modular and also to offer you somewhat more versatility when it's time to design the coil and how to mount them on it. Basically, like I said, here we got the coils, yeah? This is one coil I have shown you in the previous video how to make it. The coils turn out to be somewhat decent, not perfect, but decent, which for me it's enough. The frame support of the 3D model and talk a bit about itself. This 3D model got as well a place for a 8mm bolt, which can just be through onto the frame, like so. This will give somewhat a small cogging effect, but in a result it will give a bit of inductance, but like I told you in the previous part, I don't want to rely. But it is on the 3D model if you want to use it. Now let's talk about the coils, how to configure them, because as example, on the coil 3D model, we got a place for 6 coils, and they can be configured as a monoface, meaning that all the coils will be placed in series. This result, it will be somewhat better, it will offer a high voltage while spinning at low RPM, revolution per minute, but also it will not be offering a high current. If you'll go with a two-phase or three-phase configuration, meaning you'll be placing, let's say, two coils here, and two here, and two here, and connect them in a delta or a star configuration, you'll be get more power, but in result, you'll get less voltage. I want to show you now how to configure them if you choose to go with three-phase, let's say, or maybe two-phase, or like I say, I will go just with a monophase, meaning all the coils will be placed in series. I will start first by showing the, the monophase, which for me it's the most simple way of installing the coil. Basically, we just got two coils, them two, let's say, and because the coils have been wanted in the same direction, when we have to install them, let's say, onto the, onto the stator 3D model, if you look at the coil, they're being winded clockwise. So one wire is coming all the way around and it's ending above. While the other, the beginning, is start from under the coil. Now because the second coil has been winded in the same orientation clockwise, we got the same orientation, like so. So it's starting from beneath the coil and it's end up on top of the coil. On the edge to be more exactly. And how to configure them as a monoface is quite simple. Well, take the first coil and we just get the wire which is under. So the beginning of the first coil will go to the ending of the second coil. But the second coil has to be flipped, kind of like this. So we go from the first coil, we got the beginning which is going under it and it's going all around and it's coming from the top. And then the second, because has been wanted clockwise, that's why uh, normally in a generator, the second row of bobbins they are winded anti-clockwise, so you don't have to flip it. But um, the way I did it, you have to flip one. And then from the second coil, we get the wire which go under, and then we got the wire which go all around. So from the first coil, you have to connect the ending wire to the second coil beginning. And for making the life easy, I choose to go with this type of connector, two connectors. They are rated at about 5 amperes, which I think is plenty. Now to connect them properly, we just get a small knife and scrape away the varnish from the wire to expose the metal under the lacquer. Till it looks something like this. And then we do the same with the second one. We don't have to overdo it, just a bit. And then it's just a matter of connecting them two together like so, then just placing them onto the stator. And for connecting them temporarily, I will be using more zip tie. I think one should do the trick for the moment. And then we just have the ends. So remember, for a monophase, we get the beginning of the first coil, and then the output of the first coil, the end of the first coil, will go to the beginning of the second coil, which is going under if it's winded in the same direction. And then we just scrape the lacquer as well from the beginning and to the end. And then we bring back the frame from the generator. And also, we'll bring the DVM and set it on AC 
and then by using some alligator clips we connect to the coil the polarity is not important as this generator this stage is producing a ac voltage and we see on the dvm we got zero volts and then shall bring the the rotor with magnets in the 3d frame and give it a slight spin and we see we are generating some voltage at a slight rotation i'm generating about 300 millivolts and if i do it a bit faster i am reaching about let's say half a volt in this configuration and now this was a monophase and also let's check the current i'll be placing my dvm in current mode as well ac we are generating at a slight rotation about 200 milliamps and if i do it a bit faster we are getting nearly 300 milliamps in this configuration now i'll be removing the rotor with magnets and show you how to configure it as a two-phase but before that i have first to modify a bit the rotor which is holding the magnets as example because i got six magnets and as well six coils the only configuration I can do for the generator at the moment, at this stage, it is the monophase. But I would like to show you, maybe you want to try a different approach or you want to use multiple phases on how you can tackle this situation. But before that, talking about how to do the two phases and three phases, I have first to go back to the design and change my design, the rotor design, which is currently holding six magnets and cut it down to two because I got six coils and as well six magnets. The only configuration I can do in this configuration, it is only the monophase. But if I want to do a two phase or a three phase system, I have to do some small modification. The first one, like I said, I went back to the design and modified the rotor design to only accommodate two magnets and then after slicing it in cura and print it as well here we have it this one compared to the, the rotor which is holding six magnets if you have decided to go with multiple phases can be done right at the beginning but i wanted to offer you multiple variants for this axial flux generator i am trying to build second part was to, to dismantle another microwave oven transformer to harvest the magnetron and retrieve the two magnets with any. After I got the two magnets, I was start to placing them on the new router and then giving it them a slight encouragement to go tightly in the hole and after that just pulling it a bit and leave it to settle. After that I grab another 50 mm, 50 cm long rod which as well it is a threaded rod with a diameter of 8 mm so 0.8 cm start to assemble the new router. After I got the new router, we can start talking about how we can make the two-phase system. So now let's talk about how to do the two-phase system. Basically, after removing one of the coil and leaving just one, this time the beginning of the wire is under and the ending is looping all around clockwise. Then we just get the second coil, like so, and place it onto the stator by skipping and placing it according on the stator 180 degrees one to another like so and then secure it with some zip ties because firstly we have to recreate the monophase and by doing it one at a time it will be much simpler to work instead of having all the coils secure on the stator and going from there all right so now let's connect the first phase first of all we have to connect them in series the beginning from the first phase first coil is this one the ending of the first coil first phase is this one looping all around then it's going to the second coil the wire which is going anti-clockwise from the top and ending under so them two wires have to be connected we scrape a bit the varnish from the wire you can use some sandpaper i saw that it's much better instead of using the box cutter but it will be up to you and then just connect them two together like so making sure the connection is snug and here we just got the two ends let's say the beginning and the end from the first phase now we get two more coils and place them as well onto the stator in the same fashion but this time because the first phase got the first coil normally place it we have to place the second phase as well face up so do not flip it place it as the first one and secure it as well with some zip ties and also try to make sure that the zip tie ends 
doesn't overlap the coils because if it will do so the magnet will collide with it most of the part it will just be breaking the zip ties and make the coil not uh, center onto the stator frame and now how to connect it as well because we have to create kind of like a star point between them two because this will be a two-phase now not a monophase it will be acting as a two-phase system the first two phases coils the wires which start from the beginning have to be connected together you can do so as well with the help of another connector and also add a wire to them this will be our reference point between the two coils here as well while i'm doing this it's a bit important to let you know that you can go with a delta or a star configuration normally with a star configuration you'll be getting more voltage and a small amount of current but still it will be better than if it just was a single monophase due to the bumps when the magnet is passing all around instead of you having only one wave you got two waves so two pulses the voltage doesn't have time to collapse much and now with the center tap between the two faces connected this is mostly as a reference point which we'll be using maybe later on but this will be connection between the phase let's say star or delta and now from the second coil second phase and we get another coil and we place it in the same direction with the ending wire starting from above this time so it's flip it and it will have to be connected to that wire leaving the wire which is going all around clockwise alone i'll be making it a bit simple to demonstrate for reference if you are more interesting about this stuff you can find in the video description more details regarding this uh, this axial flux generator i am trying to build and after we have connected the second ending wire from the second phase first coil to the second phase first wire we secure it as well with some zip tie after two phases have been connected we are left with two wires from the two phases these they are the two phases output and this is just the neutral connection between them two and then i shall grab the, the generator frame and place the stator on it like so then we scrape the ends of the two coils to the box cutter so you can attach some wire at this stage and a bit uh, things easy later on and also let's bring the oscilloscope onto the mix and place it onto the table like so and then i will be grabbing the new rotor with the two magnets and insert it as well generator frame make sure that it spin freely it does and then we just connect the two probes from the oscilloscope so this one will show phase one and the other probe phase two and then we connect one ground probe from the oscilloscope and now we turn it and here we got here are the two faces they are 120 degrees out of phase so we have successfully created two phase i will be going ahead and do the third phase as well like i did the other two phases so i'll be removing again the, the stator and place it on the table and get the last two coil them two and place one here on the same orientation the wire which go from beneath will connect to this point here which is the neutral going from the first phase and second phase but before that it is zip tie time secure the first coil for the third phase and connect that wire the beginning of the third phase the neutral connection by first scraping it a bit then just placing it like so and adding back the connector for holding the neutral connection in its place now remember you don't have to be flipping the coils for this configuration and here we have it our three phase stator let's test it so we got the neutral point phase one phase two and phase three so l1 l2 a3 or a b c make it a bit simple let's bring back the magnetic rotor the two magnets and bring back as well the oscilloscope and connect the first channel to the first phase and then the second channel to the second phase and then the neutral and these are the two phases and if you look closely at the oscilloscope you can see that one it's a bit out of phase and now if disconnect the second phase and connect the third phase like so and look again on the oscilloscope we can see that we got the third phase by 120 degrees out of phase now my oscilloscope can show three phases it's only capable of doing two i think i got a trick under my sleeve let me show you so here i got connected to the three phase generator a simple contraption three yellow leds connected in a star pattern and now if i take the new rotor with the two magnets and attach it to the drill place it as well on generator and turn it we see that it's not lighting up all three LEDs due to the magnets not being strong enough but if I will take my old magnetic rotor that one with the six magnets and attach it to the drill and insert that one into the generator like so 
and turn it, we light all three of them with ease. So the three phases is working as it should. Now this was quite a nice interesting approach to check if I can go with three phase or two phase. I think with two phase maybe I can do it but three phase definitely is not for this type of generator as the magnets are not so strong enough for it. And also is because you need at least nine coils and a pair let's say of four magnets or two magnets but at least you need to have at least three coil per phase so i think i'll just go with a mono phase now here is coming the part where i have to say goodbye i will tackle the mono phase and also the rest build of, of this generator in the next part till then thank you very much for watching and i hope i will see you all in the next one till then have a nice day and thank you very much for watching see ya